Hi everyone, welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'll be showing you a fast and easy way to get your dwarves from Massive Darkness onto the game board. Some of the dwarves have large and obvious mold lines. For the smaller lines I'm using a small file, and for the bigger chunks of plastic I'm using a hobby knife. If there are mold lines on the base I'm just going to leave those and cover them later with textured paint. Once the dwarves are cleaned up I'm then going to mount them on bottle caps and prime them with Corax White. When using quick shade, you're best off using a bright primer. Next, I'm going to paint the skin of the dwarves using three different skin tones. For the skin, I'm using Barbarian Flesh, Tanned Flesh, and Elven Flesh, all by Army Painter. A wet palette isn't necessary, but if you're painting a lot of miniatures at once, it helps keep your paint from drying out. I'm using relatively thin paint, probably 50-50 paint and water, so I don't obscure any of the small details on the face. First I'm going to do one quick layer just to get coverage on all the skin, then I'll do a second touch-up layer. Once the skin is done, I'm going to do the eyes. That way if I mess up, I still have the skin tones on my palette, and I nearly always mess up the eyes on the first few. First I'm putting down some pure white over the eye using white scar. After that, I'm putting down a small dot of eschen grey. You can use any color for the iris, but darker is better. The whites of the eyes are a bit too big, but I just touched that up with some of the skin tones. Once the eyes are done, I'm using Steel Legion Drab to paint the studded leather armor and the bracers. Now the whole time I'm painting, I'm not worried about being super neat, as long as I'm only accidentally getting paint on an area that just has more primer on it. Some of the skin tone is on the beard, some of this brown is getting onto the axe and the cloth skirt. These mistakes are all going to get covered up as I add each new color. I've also left the hands of the dwarves unpainted until now. I'm going to paint some of the dwarves' hands with Steel Legion Drab to make it look like they're wearing gloves. Others I'll paint with their matching skin tones. Half of my dwarves are also going to get a brown hat, while the rest are going to get a different color. I'm doing this just to add a little variety to how the dwarves look, but if you wanted to speed your process up even further, you could just paint all your dwarves to look the same. Once I'm done with the brown, I'm going to paint the skirts of the dwarves using Skaven Blight Dinge. Whichever color you choose for the skirt, just make sure it has a good contrast with the armor so they don't blend together. The quick shade is going to remove a lot of the subtlety from the colors, darkening all of them so colors that are similar in tone might be indistinguishable after being shaded. And this is something I'm keeping in mind with all my colors when I apply them. Everything is going to get much darker after the quick shade is fully cured, so I'm choosing bright colors that contrast well with each other. The next two colors I'm putting on my palette are Filthy Suit and Althuan Grey. I'm going to be using these two colors for the remaining hats and the boots of the dwarves. For the remaining hats, I'm using the filthy suit. I'm also using filthy suit for the bottom part of the boots. There's a tuft of fur all around the top of the boot, and for this, I'll be using the Althuan Grey. For all the belt pouches, I'm going to be using three different colors, Xandry Dust and Elysian Green from Games Workshop, and Wasted Jeans from Army Painter. I just chose three faded out colors that I thought might look like well-used fabric or leather. And once again, I'm just trying to create a little bit of originality for each dwarf by randomizing the colors of the pouches. Once all our dwarves have their belt pouches done, I'm adding two more colors to the palette for the hammers. For the shaft of the hammer, I'm using Baylor Brown. For the metal brace that holds the head of the hammer in place, I'm using Pig Iron from P3. 
Most of the colors are on the dwarf now, so I'm starting to be more careful with the application of the paint. So far I've avoided using any mixed colors for the dwarves. This is another way to speed up your painting process. For the head of the hammer, however, I needed to mix two colors to get the right yellow tinted metal from the character art. So for this, I'll be using a one-to-one -one mix of glorious gold and shining silver. And as you can see, this creates a nice light brass color for the hammerheads. While you've got all these metallics out, you can also use them for the studs on the armor and the buttons on the pouches. But I'm going to be saving that for my last step. Now that the hammers are finished, it's time to pick colors for the beards. These are some of the colors that I normally use for hair colors. But for the dwarves, I'm going to be going with Celestra Grey, Ushabdi Bone for a dirty blonde color, and Morn Fang Brown. When picking a hair color for the dwarves, I'm also choosing colors that won't blend too much into the color of their hats and will also stand out against their skin. So this means I won't be giving brown hair to a dwarf with a brown hat, or use grey hair with a grey hat. Now it's time for the last few base colors. First I'm going to put out some more pig iron, and a bit of stormhose silver. For the buttons on the belt pouches, I'm using the pig iron. This metallic is dark enough that it will look different from the armor studs. For the rivets in the hammerhead and the studs in the armor, I'm using stormhose silver. The hats have some small stitches in them, and I'm going to make these stand out with Ushabdi Bone. And that's all the base colors completed. Since I'm trying to speed paint these dwarves, I'm going to keep the base very simple. I thought about going with a tile floor pattern, but in the end I decided to go with a dirt floor. I'm going to start off with a small amount of texturing using Sterling Mud. I'm just putting small dabs of the mud in random places around the base. After giving the mud about 30 minutes to dry, I'm covering the entire base with Steel Legion Drab. This is the same color I've used for the dirt in all of my other Massive Darkness miniatures. Once again, I'm going to let that dry completely before giving the base a dry brushing with Carrick Stone. And finally, I'm painting around the base with a dark grey. For all of my bases so far, I've used a mix of Eshin grey and Abaddon black. Once again, I'm letting that dry completely before moving on to the quick shade. If you're impatient, you can use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time. And finally, I'm moving on to the Army Painter quick shade. For this, I'm using Army Painter's Strong Tone quick shade. The way I do it is to dip the miniature halfway down into the quick shade and then spread it the rest of the way around the model with a brush. Definitely use a brush that you don't care about anymore because you'll never be able to use the brush for anything else except quick shade afterwards. So I've used a larger brush to spread around the quick shade and now I'm using a smaller brush, a number three, to remove the excess pooling. The areas you really want to focus on first are the eyes and the mouth. Clear away as much quick shade as possible from the eyes and the teeth so that you don't lose these small details. You'll also want to work as quickly as possible for this part since you only have about 5 to 6 minutes before the quick shade becomes sticky and you start to leave behind permanent brush strokes. To paraphrase Gimli in Lord of the Rings, here we have a legion of dwarves, fully armed and filthy. The last step is to spray the dwarves with some matte varnish. Here is what they look like before and after. At this point you could add some highlights, or you could wait and add them a year from now. The paint is sealed in and protected. I won't be adding any highlights right away since my goal is to get these miniatures on the tabletop with a good tabletop standard paint job. 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and as always, thank you very much for watching.